Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on fever of unknown origin, especially in pediatrics in children. Fever of unknown origin is defined as a body temperature of the more than 38 degrees Celsius, lasting for more than 14 days. Without an obvious cause, despite asking a complete history, doing a full and thorough physical examination, and routine screening laboratory evaluation. So we also have to take note that it's important to differentiate between persistent fever from recurrent or periodic fevers, which usually represent serial acute illnesses. So the initial evaluation for fever of unknown origin requires a thorough history and physical examination together with the laboratory tests. So for history taking, these are the, some of the questions that we should ask, including the impact on the health and activity of the child, whether there is reduced activity, they are less active, loss of weight, any use of drugs, medications or immunosuppressive therapy that could have caused them to be more prone towards infection, any history of unusual, severe or chronic infection, suggesting immunodeficiency, history of immunizations, exposure to unprocessed or raw foods. We should also ask for any history of pica and exposure to any soil-borne or water-borne organisms that could have caused infection, exposure to industrial or hobby-related chemicals, any history of blood transfusions, travelling history, either domestic or foreign travelling, exposure to animals, ticks or mosquitoes, any recent surgical procedures or dental procedure done and also ask for any tattoo and body piercing and if indicated for older children we can ask about the sexual history to rule out sexually transmitted illnesses so for the etiology of fever of unknown origin the etiology of most occult infections causing this fever of unknown origin is actually infection so most of the cases are due to infection where the percentage is around 40 to 50 percent out of all the cases so after infection being the most common cause of fever of unknown origin in children is followed by inflammatory diseases which consists 20 percent out of all the cases and malignancy consists around 10 percent of all the cases and there are also other etiologies besides these three types Whereas around 15% of the cases, they have no specific diagnosis. So for infections, it can be localized infections, such as abscess anywhere in the body, or infective endocarditis, osteomyelitis, where there is bone infection, pneumonia as lung infection, pyelonephritis, kidney infection, and even septic arthritis in the bones. And other infections might be bacterial diseases, viral disease, or even fungal and parasite disease. So that's why we have to ask about the water and soil borne activities. Inflammatory disease can be, for example, um, sarcoidosis, rheumatic fever, Kawasaki disease, which is also quite common among children, juvenile idiopathic arthritis, or inflammatory bowel disease and so on and also SLE whereas malignancy can be anywhere in the body such as in the bones we have Ewing's sarcoma which is quite common as well Hodgkin disease leukemia or lymphoma neuroblastoma which is a common malignancy and also Wilms tumor and other malignancies so after knowing the etiologies we have to do a series of investigations to find out the cause of the fever. And these investigations, the screening test for fever of unknown origin include a full blood count with white blood cell count and the differential count, ESR and CRP, which are inflammatory markers, procalcitonin, the basic metabolic panel, liver function tests, especially to look for the hepatic transaminase levels, Urine investigations include urinalysis and also urine culture. And besides that, we can do blood culture and sensitivity as well if we are suspecting for any bacteremia. Then we can find out the causative organism. Imaging includes chest radiograph, 
which should be included for those patients who have pulmonary symptoms. For other investigations, there are also additional tests for fever of unknown origin, which includes throat culture, tuberculin skin tests for suspicion of TB, tuberculosis, or interferon gamma release assay, and also other tests for suspected infections, such as for HIV, Epstein-Barr virus, cytomegalovirus, or other antibodies. And depending on the patient's signs and symptoms and their severity, we can also consider consultation with specialists in infectious disease, immunology, rheumatic disease, or oncology specialists. So that's for the some of the investigations. And for other investigations, there are also further tests, such as lumbar puncture, for analysis and culture of the cerebral spinal fluid, ANA, or rheumatoid factor, ferritin, and serum complements. This is to evaluate for any presence of rheumatic disease. Other tests include uric acid and lactate dehydrogenase. And we can also consider CT or MRI scan of the chest, abdomen, and the head, radionuclide scans, and also bone marrow biopsy for cytology and culture. So all of these are screening tests to look out for the cause of the fever of unknown origin, the prolonged fever. So this is a simplified chart on how we approach a patient who has prolonged fever with unknown cause. So when they present with prolonged fever, we take a detailed history and physical examination and see whether they are stable or not. If the patient is stable and the specific diagnosis is identified, then we obtain appropriate tests and begin the appropriate therapy. If there is improvement, then it's good. If no improvement, then we have to consider for referral to other specialists. Whereas if they have organ damage or life-threatening signs, then we have to admit the patient and do the appropriate tests, begin the appropriate therapy. If it is a fever of unknown origin, there is no diagnosis identified. So we do those screening lab tests I've mentioned just now. And after all those tests, we reassess the results of the test. If there, we are able to identify a specific diagnosis, then it's good. However, if there is no diagnosis, then it is called the fever of unknown origin. And we can do those additional tests, such as special cultures, PCR, serology, biopsy, and also imaging studies I've mentioned just now. And we try to identify a specific diagnosis. If there is still no diagnosis, then we can refer to other specialties. So that's all for this video. Thank you.